Okay, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here uh, standing in front of you. Uh, thank you, uh, Christine, also for the invitation. I think we spoke uh, when I gave a similar presentation in, uh, in Shanghai. Uh, I see some of the students here. Uh, there will be not so much new for you, so uh, if you want to go, I will understand. <laughs> no, but we put some peppermint in your bag, so maybe everybody will stay. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's a serious thing. and. Um, I would want to talk to you about the trend of the future. And some people ask me also if you have a glass ball or what is your story. But it's not anything like that. Um, I want to, to, to explain to you about the tool and what it is and why it was made and how it maybe also can support you. Um, now I think that Yuji did a good job already to introduce Smith and Zone, so no need to do that. Uh, I work a bit longer for Smith & Zone as UG is doing. I worked for Smith & Zone for uh, uh, 26 years, almost. And in that time, I have been mostly um, uh, active um, uh, abroad in sales. And to be honest, um, uh, many things what I've seen in this industry, I'm, I'm not so proud of. And I start realizing that also, um, uh, mainly when, uh, since I'm in a new job, since I'm responsible for sustainability, and I totally agree with the remark uh, Steve was also saying. I think that part of the problems uh, and why leather is so much under attack now is because that we have been sleeping also for some time and we should have speed up the things what we have, do, have been doing now. Um, yeah, so I have the luxury that I'm working for a family business where sustainability is in the blood. And what does it mean? It means that our CEO has only one um, uh, task. He needs to bring the company in a safe situation, in a sound situation, to the eighth generation. It's a seventh generation family business. That's his only task. Um, I'm getting a carte blanche, more or less, also to do um, what I want uh, um, um, to support the industry. Um, so my, my job is rather easy. I don't need to convince the owner or the CEO that uh, sustainability is important. It's in the blood. So it's quite easy. Um, I spent quite a lot of time on Tender of the Future and together with my colleague um, Mike Redwood also on Leather Naturally. So, um, but I want to focus here on Tender of the Future. Yeah, what is the Tender of the Future? If you would see a hard copy, this is the Tender of the Future. What is it? It's a simple document um, with simple questions, which is only having one purpose, creating awareness. And I think that Wolf, Wolfram used a word in his presentation about acceptability. I think it was your last uh, sheet. But in my opinion, there is one word in front of that, and that's awareness. I think when you are not aware what you need to do, uh, you will also not be able to say yes to something which you don't know what it is. So the Tenery of the Future is a, it's a, it's a PDF. You can download it from the website, tenerofthefuture.org. It's available free of charge. It's a very simple checklist. It's a checklist with questions yes and no. I will explain you a bit more about it, but I want to share you also with you how it was uh, initiated. It was initiated in 2013, and it's an initiative which is coming from the Netherlands. And basically, the idea was coming from brands who are sourcing leather goods from India, from Pakistan, from the Far East, from Africa, who said, how do I know that the, that the goods, the leather, and the leather goods are buying? How do I know that it's sustainably produced? How do I know what happened with the animal? How do I know what happened with the people who made the leather, who made the leather goods? How do I know that the environment is not spilled? And actually, many people had no idea. And I think this is, this is not only for uh, leather buyers or leather manufacturers, leather brands from the Netherlands. This will be for many other companies, uh, countries. But the same will be for many leather manufacturers. I think we have the luxury that here in the UK and in Scotland, uh, you have tenneries which are top of the bill. You know what's going on. You know what's requested from you. But in many parts of the world, the people simply have no idea. And uh, I, like I said, UG and me, we work for a family business and we really approach sustainability from the form of inclusion. So we think that we should give people the chance to commit themselves to a certain standard. And, and, and 
Elton was also talking that this was a kind of minimum standard about the presentation from Wolfram. But we also think that we should first communicate a minimum standard. And then it's up to the tannery to say, okay, yes, I'm going to join or not. Um, yeah, so it was um, made in 2013 with the help of many specialists. Many specialists from uh, the leather industry, but also specialists who are focused on um, uh, decent working conditions, uh, animal welfare, so all kinds of specialists. That's how we made this uh, checklist. And we introduced it early 2016. And I remember that when we were in the compiling stage in 2013-14, we were saying, well, this is a business model and uh, we should do something with it. And there were many experts from the industry also, consultants who were saying, yeah, you have to charge money and you have to do this and you have to do that. And then we said, okay, there are very good initiatives like the Leather Working Group, like the ZDAC, but for the tenders especially like the Leather Working Group, in my opinion, it's the best initiative in the last 10 years because it, had risen, it has really helped the industry to make steps forward. But for many families, it's also damn difficult. It's damn difficult. Uh, expensive. Eh? Expensive, okay, it's always depending on your margin or your turnover, but it's, it's quite an investment. And we said, okay, maybe, maybe the Tenderly of the Future tool can be a tool which can create an awareness for tanneries that they understand what is important to produce leather in a sustainable way that then later on they will say, okay, maybe I should go for a leather working group uh, audit. Because, to, to be clear, eh, the, the, the tender of the future tool, this is not an auditing tool. It's an awareness tool. And why I'm saying that is that um, I had a couple of examples that a tannery who I know they sent this back to me and they said, hey, look, I, uh, it's a very good initiative, they said, and I learned from it. But look, I have a tick in the box in almost every question. I'm doing very good. And I know those tenories. And I said, well, actually, I find it difficult to say also. But I say, okay, but why do you say that you're doing very good here? Well, actually, you know it's not that good. You're not filling it out for me. It's an awareness tool for yourself that you get an idea on very specific and different topics, which uh, later on I will explain you about. Um, but okay, we had a discussion that we said, no, we are not going to make this any uh, commercial tool, because we don't believe in that. And then we said, we're going to make it available free of charge. Because if we are going to ask 100 or 200 euro, the whole uh, administrational uh, circus around it, doesn't make any sense. So we said, okay, we make it available free of charge, and we go away from uh, making the exclusive thing from the founders, and Smith and & Zone, and myself, I'm one of the founders. We said, no, we want to invite the chemical industry and all other persons who want to be uh, uh, supporting this um, uh, to get it in the industry. Um, so I'm very happy also that, well, you see many brands here standing, uh, and TFL is here, um, uh, Trumpler is here. Uh, I think TFL I saw also on the list. But I, I think this is a really good example of where we as a chemical industry, uh, where we compete in the market, that we realize that this is a topic where we should collaborate. Yeah. And then coming back a bit, um, why, why we think that the is the future tool is, is important. We think it's important because there's an increasing pressure on the industry. And this increasing pressure is the reason why uh, minimum standards are being made, which were um, um, presented by, by Wolfram. And this is also the reason, for instance, why uh, leatherpanel.org yeah, with UNIDO, with, um, with Ivan, why they are focusing on this training. The industry is under attack and we really need to train create the industry awareness that things need to go different. And I totally agree with some remarks which have been made earlier on. If a tenery in the end says, okay, I've done something like that, and for me this is not practice, yeah, go out of this industry. But I do believe that we should give the opportunity to tenneries, to leather manufacturers, to brands to make this move.
because it's all about image. And um, I'm also connected together with, uh, with Mike with Leather Naturally. And here also for Smith & Zone, Leather Naturally comes forward. Uh, because we are really convinced that we should realize that um, we can do everything very good uh, if all the tanneries, all the leather manufacturers in Europe will do a fantastic job. And they will remain to be a part in this industry who is not doing that. They are killing just the image of leather. We can do many good things, but it's not going to be enough. So this is also the reason why we are engaging also with the tenure of the future. And we have been trying to reach also tenneries in various countries where they could really make use of this. To try to make them understand what's happening in the leather industry. And for many tenneries in countries where the conditions are not that good, are not that good in many cases these tenneries, they simply have no idea they simply have no idea also what a brand or what a consumer uh, in the Western countries or in America or whatsoever is demanding from them. In many cases, they have no idea. And I've spoken to many tanneries in my history with Smith and so on. And um, uh, many of these tanneries are yeah, uh, receptive also uh, to, to, to this discussion and want to make a choice also if they are going to be in or out. I think um, this is a good, a good way. So is it time to give up leather? No, it's not time to give up leather. But um, I think that we should all realize also, and I think we realize also here, that um, the transparency and to be more open on how leather is being produced, we have, a, we have a big challenge there, and we have a responsibility there as well. So how can the tenderly of the future tool uh, support the industry? It can uh, increase the awareness of what is sustainable leather production. Um, it can, um, uh, it can support the production of leather with the best available techniques. And I will show you later on in the tool what we mean with that. Because what we mean with that is that we say, okay, um, 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 we are asking questions uh, on specific topics but we are also linking to sources of information where the people filling out the Standard of the Future checklist can get more information from. And, and to me, that is a really important thing because um, I think many of the, the talks which have been made today, it's about training, it's about creating awareness, it's about audits. And I think the challenge for all of us is that are we going to try to do uh, the same things in a different way or are we going to try to uh, do it in such a way that we uh, catalyze each other and that we really try to learn from each other? And that's why I'm very happy also that especially what uh, Ivan is doing with Unido, he is really having the momentum because they are having fantastic things on their website. And um, I think that the moment is now also there that we all start realizing that and that we are trying to focus and bringing more people to that website um, for additional information and for um, education. Um, yeah, what we have also seen, uh, we have also seen from brands which, who we know also that they are working with this tool, that they are mainly using this tool also to get a, a discussion with a brand or with a leather manufacturer. That they start talking about sustainability that they start talking about emission, that they start talking about safety, that they start talking about work condition. And it's especially this discussion which is helping the, the industry forward. So how does it work? Um, it works that uh, everybody who's interested can download this tool. And in practice it works like this, that all the tannery or the brand is asking the leather manufacturer to fill this out and not as an audit, but just as a discussion topic. So in the, in the cases where the tenderly has filled it out, the tenderly brands are sitting on the table and talking about the outcome. And the tenderly of the future is focusing on 14 different topics. And we are talking, and that, that's why I think it's so important that, it's, that, that we should understand that it's an awareness tool. 
Because if you look to all the auditing tools so far, all the auditing tools are focusing on a small topic. And they are, Leather Working Group, for instance, is focusing on environmental stewardship. The ZDIC is more focusing on the environment uh, and on water and what the chemicals are doing with, um, uh, with people and with the environment. Uh, BS, uh, BSCI, there are all kind of social audits. But really, there are no programs which are all focusing on all the different topics. Because to audit a leather manufacturer, and okay, the leather manufacturers here know, know best themselves, to audit a leather manufacturer on all these topics is impossible. And it's also impossible in such a way that there are so many brands who have their own standards and they will never um, um, uh, agree on a, on a, on a shared, um, shared standard. So what we have said, okay, we are going to focus on these 14 topics with simple questions just to, have a, as, to use it as a conversation starter. Well, this is an example of the health and safety page. So in the top, we try to explain a bit um, why this is uh, being used. And the health and safety, um, um, the main message here is that consumers want to use leather products that have been produced under good working conditions. I think it's rather simple. Rather simple in a way, if we all buy a pair of shoes in the, in the shop, uh, I think nobody wants to be responsible that uh, harm has been done with the environment or with animal or with people. So you, you want to commit yourself to something. It's simple questions. It's simple questions and, and some of these questions you can ask yourself, is it auditable at all? No, it isn't, but it's also not necessary. It's just that we want to have the leather manufacturer for which this is a good tool to think about, um, uh, yeah, why should I have a health and safety policy in use? Or why should I organize health and safety training for workers? Or why should I take, um, 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 or why should I have personal protection equipment, like sh uh, shoes, boots, gloves, protective clothing? So it's really awareness, 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 awareness. Here you see some of the links, and here you see some of the links where we already try to relate to the initiatives and the programs which have been set up already in industry. So here again, our principle is, is that we don't want to try to reinvent the wheel, but we want to make sure that we make use of the tools which are already available in the market. Yeah, responsible leather manufacturers have a huge potential. Yeah. It's, it's them logically, I think. But um, I, I think also, and that's also what I hear when I speak with, with brands in the Netherlands, for instance, um, um, that there are not so many uh, consumers asking where the leather is coming from. And even from brands, at least that's the, the remarks what I'm getting, even from brands uh, uh, which are focusing on, uh, on sustainability, even they say that consumers are not so much cared with all kind of difficult questions. But it's all about also not being, not wanting to be confronted with a, bit, with a bad image. So a lot of people are in this also from the defense, but I think we should use it as a, as a big potential uh, opportunity for the future. What we try to do with uh, Ten with the Future also is that we try to focus on a wide picture because I also know leather manufacturers in some countries who have some parts perhaps uh, rather well organized and when you look then to the other part you think, oh my god. And that is also the discussion what is going on also in the leather working group now is that uh, the leather working group is a very good initiative uh, and where there is now also the discussion we should go further because everything is okay when we audit but how is it in six months time? or in eight months' time. And I think if you're a responsible leather manufacturer, okay, that, that's no problem. But uh, here it is also a point that uh, there are also people who only go for the certificate. And um, it should be OK on the day that the certificate is being audited. And for the rest, it's not so much an issue. Um, yeah, the crucial message here is also that um, we also try to say to the tenders, hey, don't wait start today to make a chance. And you can make it very difficult for yourself, but you can also say, okay, I can make certain changes already from today. So that's the, that's the message we also try to give 
when we are making presentations to tendering organizations. Um, we just released a, a new newsletter where we um, um, analyzed the number of downloads and where the downloads are coming from, and it was uh, released a couple of weeks ago. We have now uh, a bit over 500 downloads, and uh, 150 of these downloads describe themselves as directors or board members. 145 are active at management level. 85 downloaders are technicians or active in R&D. 30 of the downloaders are CSR managers. 26 are connected to knowledge institutions or lecturers or students. And 25 are in marketing and sales. And from these 500, we have now some 80 downloaders from the Netherlands. Uh, okay, it was invented there also, so uh, the, most of the promotion was done there. 65 from India, 44 from Germany, uh, 33 from the United Kingdom, uh, 16 from France, 15 from Pakistan, 15 from China, 13 from Italy, 12 some from South Africa, and 12 from Brazil. Um, yeah, I would like to invite you uh, to, to download the tool, uh, to download the tool, tenminutesofthefuture.org. Uh, uh, it's available free of charge. Any comment of you on this tool, or where you say, okay, I can support you in building the tool, expanding the tool, or promoting the tool, or using it in the project, we are very, help, uh, very open uh, to your uh, comments. We would like to support you also where we can, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.